Um, yeah, and then it, I would call to or call the meeting to order at six o whatever time. Yes. Yeah, it's almost there. It's setting up YouTube. Oh, five twenty eight five. We're good. You're on, Commissioner. Don't forget your microphones. Calling to order the Tree Advisory Commission meeting um, at 6.01 on Thursday, August 18th, 2022. I have a roll call, please. Okay, we have uh, Commissioner Frederick. You're here. Commissioner Wiley? Here. Commissioner King? Here. And Commissioner Hansen is here. Right. All right. I now open the floor for public comment. I don't have anybody. No public. No public. No public comment. I now make a motion to amend the agenda. And the amendment is to introduce the new commissioner. Is that correct? That is correct. The amendment is to introduce our new commissioner. Okay. All for motions. All I'm approve. All who approves. That we didn't have a second. <laughs> we need a second. I second. So we have a motion and a second. The motion is approved. Motion is approved. Okay. <laughs> um, maybe go ahead with the. Amended agenda. The amended yeah. agenda is uh, now to uh, introduce um, our new commission member. Please go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm guessing that's me, unless there's someone else new <laughs> in the room too. Uh, it's, it's you, Elizabeth. Yeah, maybe you could uh, introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, so yes, I'm Elizabeth Hansen. I use she, her pronouns. Uh, I moved to DuPont um, coming up on our two-year anniversary, um, actually, in the summer of 2020 uh, with my partner and his son, who's going to be a junior at Stella Boom High School this fall, um, just a couple more weeks. Um, I do plan to be there in person for future meetings. We just had a, a scheduled um time away uh, for this date. So looking forward to meeting you all in person soon, but very excited to get involved in this. I will say that um, trees are one of the main reasons that we chose to move to DuPont, which might um, sound a little odd, but we just fell in love with the, the tree cover. We live in the historic district. So um, driving right down Barksdale and all of those cherry blossoms, the timing was just perfect that first time we came to town. Um, but I have a long history of um, family members that have been involved in the tree care business, the forestry um, industry. And so it's just a personal interest of mine and excited to get more involved and give back to DuPont. Excellent. Welcome. We're really happy to have you. Thank you. I need to make now a motion for the approval of the consent agenda. I motion. Second. All who approve. Sure. All right, approval of the consent agenda has passed. Um, we talk about you know, uh, number 5.1, the tree Ad advisory commission minutes of July 21st, 2022. Yeah, so um, all in favor, all opposed? All favor? Aye. Okay, I think, I think it, it passes. Okay, um, so the consent agenda has been approved. Move on to discussion items. First discussion item is uh, approving our minutes from uh, last month on July 21st, 2022. Oh, okay, so I'm just confused. So now we're going on to discussion items, okay. Um, the, uh, we're going to talk about the Arbor Day and tree planting events. Um, this is something that I think we really need to kind of get a handle on as far as dates and times. Um, and obviously the location too. Do we have any ideas opening floor for a discussion for our Arbor Day and tree planting? So if I could talk for a second, you know, we're, we're late this year on getting this organized, but it's still important. Um, I was thinking that maybe we could pick a park or maybe a school. I know that there's some trees in the street tree nursery that um, we could dedicate one or two for a tree planting ceremony. It's up to you guys to figure out where and when. Um, 
I was hoping we could figure that out tonight. What are the timelines as far as how, how late can we safely put a tree in the earth? Honestly, the, the later, the better. Yeah. Okay. Um, this, this is January. probably not, not, <laughs> we, we need to do it this year though. It needs to be. I mean, October is a good time. That's what I was wondering if yeah. October would not be a would be a good time um, to do that. I'm actually going to be out of town like the last week of October, first week of November. So I'll throw something else out there is that um, if we put it in one of the irrigated parks, it really opens up. We could do it anytime. Um, there's a lot of parks. What I could do is probably if you guys want to maybe think of a date, I could come up with a list of parks and areas that we could. Mm -hmm. maybe used to identify unless you could think of anywhere right now that you've specifically thought of well if you want to like pick a date or like, for, in a park i can definitely go scope it out um because you know where their the irrigation is okay let me um maybe what i could do is come up with um, a few park locations that are irrigated mm -hmm. and then that would open up the date period, I mean, maybe we could do it sooner than later or later, but irrigation opens up a little more opportunity. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're not available in October, I mean, is there other months, dates, weeks, times at work that you want to try to pin down tonight? I have questions about the uh, public engagement yeah. right. aspect. Hang on. The public engagement aspect. And so if I were trying to put people there and I don't know what your average attendance is. What is it when you do it? I will tell you, I've seen some ceremonies here that I couldn't believe how many people showed up, dignitaries, senators, you know, council, mayor, mm -hmm. media. I've seen a couple that were pretty small. I think it's, it's how much um, um, interest can you guys drum up? I mean, what, it, this is your guys' um, project. So I know there's a um, park, uh, market still in September. So that's an event that we can coattail on um, with a nearby location for that. Drumming up separate a community engagement, which this is a chance to um, let everybody know why they moved here yeah. and what, what they can do about it is I would say I don't know if we're ready this year for that or not, but you would be rolling that out with the idea also of telling people how they can be involved in different things. And I understand where you're going at. Maybe what we need to do is pin down um, number one, who do we want to attend? Number two is when do we want the event? And number three is where? Should we just start from the top? Who, who do you guys, I mean, do you want to see the general public? Do we want to keep it in house? What are you thinking? Uh, first off, we want to make sure that our mayor is available, and then everyone <laughs> yeah, we, else kind of goes. Okay. Uh, second. Something else I wanted to add: um, in previous events, there was one at Chloe Clark Elementary that not only did it have you know the entirety of the city's administration and the commission or chair back then. I had a couple hundred students that were involved and it was kind of a cool event. I mean, and that's entirely um, likely too. I mean, you were talking about a farmer's market or something. There's a farmer's market in um, September. And the only reason I think about that, and I have to talk to other people. I don't know if that's when they're going to do the makeup for the Buffalo soldier event, but Buffalo soldiers were forest rangers and <laughs> that's how we tie it all together and put a bow on it. But I don't know if that that's possible cool. yeah. at, at the, but so I throw that out as a potential, just, you know, if we were going to coattail on something. Um, the other is if the market doesn't work um, to use the Buffalo Soldier reenactor event later, because they may be able to come outside of the market zones and combine it with and then somehow pull in urban forestry national parks and get somebody um, uh, to come to the tree planting who is. Um, also, whose approval do we need to plant a tree in any specific? Um, I'll area? check on that, but I think it's, it's, it's your job to direct the council of mayor. So 
we need to, you need to direct you know advice right. <laughs> advice okay. give direction advice. or <laughs> advice that yeah. was the wrong term yeah um, yeah I, I like i really like the idea of, of tying in like the buffalo soldier stuff whether it's at the at, at the street fair which would be awesome or a later reenactment i think that's a, a really kind of neat thing to do you know with that being said there's probably room at clock tower to put a tree right. I mean, or, or the... if we're going to go through that, that, that source stuff we can also look at, at chief leshy um or or over there by the museum yeah, I, I'm, I'm open to entertain. Those all have irrigation. Um, Robinson Park at the museum does. Clock Tower, where did you say the Buffalo Soldiers are going to be there? I mean, well, Buffalo I don't know Tower. if that's going to happen. I know it got canceled on Buffalo Soldier Day. Mm. And the backup plan is because okay. uh, I, I think they can still have them. I think that must be a child attended event and activity. So now I'm thinking pile it on with a PTA at, <laughs> at maybe the middle school. I mean, if we want to, you know, the middle school okay. um, and, and getting those kids involved um, you know, and aware. In, in the K through 12, if I remember right, mm -hmm. I think that the commissioner was um, interested in doing some public outreach with the schools in town. So maybe and if we tied all that together. We tie it together and we just got to figure out who's going to take care of what maybe maybe you could um, connect with the school. Could you connect with the Amy and the Buffalo Soldiers? And then I'll figure out maybe um, start gathering some good locations, not necessarily set in stone, but maybe to accommodate what you find out from the school and from Amy. Does that sound good? Yeah. So, I mean, as far as, I mean, October, it looks really good. I mean, I, I'm actually not out of town until the 27th. Okay. Um, so, I mean, so we have right now, should we, do I venture to say when is in October sometime who right now we have the city administration, the Buffalo it, soldiers, and maybe some K through 12 participation. Unless, unless we can somehow finagle it for that, uh, that last uh, farmer's market that you're talking about. Right. That, um, and maybe that's a question for Amy. So I think that would be Amy first to see what her plans are. I have no idea. And I'm speaking completely blind yeah, on that. And that's okay. Um, I, what I, I am trying to do though, is public engagement as yeah, a goal, not I, just putting a tree in the ground. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And, uh, so why, you know, I'll find Amy tomorrow and, and um, just to kind of get her opinion on that. I could help you with that. Um, and if she didn't have a date for the market, then maybe having it in October, um, I don't know if the funds got set aside, the original funds, but if there are funds that must be spent, I'm all over helping her spend them. Um, yeah. <laughs> and if it brings the Buffalo Soldiers back, uh, again, that's an intersection for me um, personally, but I think it works also for kids yeah. to show them um, engagement with forestry. Yeah, it kind of it kind of um, touches the public engagement, the K through 12. Yeah, I agree with you guys. Um, okay, so right now I have who? I have the city administration, potentially the Buffalo Soldiers, and K through 12. I'll check with Amy. Do you have time to check with the school? Yeah. I okay. And then where? Right now I have um, potentially something to do with the farmers market in September. Or maybe something at Robinson Park in October. Does that sound kind of like okay? Yeah. And then where we also have Clock Tower or Robinson Park. Have we narrowed it down a little bit so far? That sound good. What's the uh, what is the date of that last um, I don't farmers market in September? Date. September 18th. It is the September the 18th. So do you think uh, that it would be a uh, you know we we can we can try to put maybe even these these two potential dates actually as as our targets so like that september i i think that um, nailing down a date is a great idea I yeah mean, if you want to try september 18th we can work with that and see. the farmer's market is on a sunday is that a sunday that is this 18th is a sunday i'm not opposed to coming here on a sunday. no i don't i'm not either but i did hot the farmer's yeah, market on thursday i did too <laughs> so <laughs> just um, confused okay so let's say september what was it the 12th September 18th. Or 18th. We have to go to meetings before that. Okay, and then um, maybe we'll look for an alternative date in October if that doesn't work. 
Does that sound good? We could we could try to do the same sort of October. We can do it like on the we can think of the a Sunday as well, because I mean people kind of maybe be home, especially in October, like the twenty third. That's right after our meeting too. That gives us time to hash out I, any. I will say that um, getting. Uh, elementary school, you know, school involvement might work better on a school day, but uh, either way, it's your guys' call. What do you all think for an October pot potential date? Um, first, we need the mayor's calendar as well. Yeah, we're um, going to have to. So we're going to have to come up with two or three potentials, and then we could talk to the PTA. Uh, if you were going to talk to the middle school, I would figure out what they have going on in October. Um, that we could. Yeah, why, why don't we plan on, um, yeah, I think we're going to have to check with the school, probably the administration here and just check on some dates. But um, tentatively, we have one for September 18th. Is there a date in October that we want to um, target right now? Check with the school and the administration. Mm -hmm. I don't have a calendar handy. Thank you. I would say later in October would be better at this point. <laughs> yeah, um, um, I'm, I'm open either way. So right now, um, I mean, when you say later, are you looking at the second or third week potentially? He, did I hear you say you're gone the 27th, Asa? Correct. The third week would be um, Monday the 17th through Friday the 21st. Is that? Do you want to pick a certain day in there that we could start with? Is there any days that work better or not for you guys? They're all open for me as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so how about if I just say – a day in the third week of um, October is an alternative to September 18th. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. So we kind of have who, we have where, and we have when. Let me just go through that again from the top and make sure we're all on the same page. So who would be the city administration, possibly the Buffalo Soldiers, possibly some K through 12? When would be either September 18th or a day on the third week of October? Mm -hmm. And where would be maybe Clock Tower and, or maybe Robinson Park? And I'm just going to throw this out there. I know that we've done two. We planted two trees in previous years at Chloe Clark Elementary. Um, should we use that as an alternative location to Robinson and Clock Tower? Or do you want to do it in a city park? I feel like we have, we can monitor and irrigate things better in a city park, but mm -hmm. the school district does have irrigation as well. And we would have to ask for their permission. I am more partial to city parks. You got it. How about if we stick to either Clock Tower or Robinson? Does that sound fair? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I think, um, I think we've got a pretty good, date and time for to propose for the Arbor Day tree planting events. Other details, um, I think I can come up with a tree. I have, I got a really cool moon fir that needs to go somewhere soon. It's, it's outgrowing its pot at the nursery. And we also have some Korean stewardias. It's, it's, a, it's a dug fir that seeds went to the moon back in the 60s. Oh, it's really, cool. really cool. Yeah, Wait have, a minute. <laughs> you know something about that? No, but I got a whole other, <laughs> like the Chloe Clark Explorer space thing and the. Oh, oh, we're I broadening mean, the. Yeah, uh, I mean that's another direction, but if you have a, might want to save that. I will hold on to that tree. We have lots of trees, but that is a very special tree to me. It, it is a very special tree and it can go with an entire, again, it has a story and can have an entire program that we are not prepared to. <laughs> Let me hold on to that tree. If you have, if you have bigger ideas for it, how does I that do. sound? I do. Go ahead. Stacey. I have a question because I'm looking at some dug firs here and they're kind of big. Yeah, we would have to be select a spot where they have room to spread, but I think we're going to hold off on that tree. Okay. We're going to hold off on that. So we have something smaller and more ornamental. We have, let me tell you, my, I have two favorites in the tree nursery that I'll share with you. Number one is a um, Korean stewardia. It's got really cool white blossoms in May, June-ish. And then the other one we have that I really like is an autumn purple ash. And it has the most spectacular autumn foliage. It almost looks like it, it's electric glowing. 
Um, we also have some, uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have some, drawing a blank. That should uh, be like in full, in full color by this time. Yeah, they're, they're, they're fairly immature and they need to be planted out, but um, the bigger ones, they have them all over Olympia on Pacific and Martin Way. I don't know if you guys have been through there um, in the fall, but they're incredible. We also have some trident maples, which are better street trees. Probably should keep them for five foot, foot planter strips. Mm -hmm. And oh boy, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, uh, let's see. Trident maples, we have hedge maples, we have those ash trees, we have horn beams that we want to reserve for five foot planter strips. Uh, the Stewardia, Catsera, I think we have a few Catsera. They would be a good park. Um, Arbor Day tree potentially. They have nice uh, autumn foliage as well. It's kind of gold and bronzy looking. I think there's one more species in there that I'm I can't remember. But um, what I'll do is when the time gets closer, I, I can get you some pictures and some inventory, and we can make those selections. We could plant more than one if you want, and we'll get to that in the new business. We can talk a little more about that. Can I ask, is there an Arbor Day budget? Okay, part of the Arbor, um, let's see, Tree City USA cr criteria is we're supposed to spend like $2 per capita. So there is, there's some funding available that we need to spend. So we can have a whole like kind of festival. Yeah, the, the potential's there to, <clears throat> you know, to spend some money on, on have and some hot apple cider. Like this. I, I think so. Can let we me, make printed materials as well? I or, think so. Let, uh, let me, or t-shirts or... Let I, me make sure that I'm yeah. not speaking um, wrongly on that, but I believe that there's some funding that um, the city is required to spend to, to maintain the Tree City USA designation, and this will definitely qualify. So if we're looking at those type of items, like, like t-shirts or... We would probably want to push to October. We're That's what I'm thinking. Rush. I I'm thinking it's more of an October thing, but it would be it would be much more scaled back if we could do something. Uh, I just met a I didn't meet him. A um, friend of mine just met a guy who's a national parks directed a national parks in California who could talk. Yes. To that if we could combine on the 18th with the Buffalo Soldier thing, yeah. if they're going to do it, that's a much more scaled back project. Um, the money doesn't need to be spent on Arbor Day, right? No, it, okay. it, it, it's um, and I have to get the specific criteria, but this, you know, we're the, part of the requirement for the Tree USA designation is that we're supposed to spend two dollars per capita in anything related to Arboriculture. How's that okay. sound? And 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 so and we don't just have to have one event. No, a year. it's not. It's so new, there's potential here. I'm just scoping this out because I don't know everything. Yes. yes. There's some money. And there may be. It'll take some examination and research to find out what are the materials that increase student engagement, which is usually T-shirts versus adult. Mm -hmm engagement those are different areas and what plus what we could afford and the other thing um the good thing is that i know a few of you are brand new here and you know you, you have a three-year term we could make this a bulb i mean let, let's get through this year feel it out and we've already got moon tree 2023 you got, you got moon <laughs> tree yeah so um that's the one i think we'll end up focusing on but I, I think that we got a late start this year because we, we weren't able to have the quorum, but we should pull something off, but we can evolve it over the next few years for sure. Um, I'm, I'm uh, sorry, Elizabeth, do you have any input? I keep forgetting you're on Zoom. No, that's okay. No, I love all of these ideas, especially the, the okay. time soldier um, event, if that happens. Sounds good. All right, so I think that we're kind of all on the same page. Is there any more? Do uh, you want to ask if there's any more discussion, Asa, on the Arbor Day uh, tree planting event? Is there any more discussion on the Arbor Day on uh, and tree planting event, item number 6.1? Yeah, let's move on to item number 6.2, public education and outreach. And uh, we might be able to just kind of cycle that in. I, 
unless we have something more to talk about that as okay. opposed to six point two, um, a little bit. Uh, so basically, I don't know if you remember our work calendar for twenty twenty two. We had uh, it was we were talking about getting involved with the comprehensive plan cycle that's due, and I believe Barb Kincaid, the director of public services, might be here to give us an update on on that. Um, is that correct, Royce? Okay. All right, um, Barbara, are, are you? Would you like to start your presentation? Oh, sure. Is it is it time? Time to start it. We are ready for you if if you're ready. <laughs> Great. Um, well, first of all, I do want to introduce myself. I I met uh, I've met some of you, but not all of you. Uh, I'm Barb Kincaid, and I um came to the city oh, almost two years ago to be the community development director replacing Jeff Wilson and um, and what the city has decided to do is actually to merge community development with public works uh, into one department to save a uh, budget to be able to hire a city engineer. So I'm the director over this newly formed department and we are looking for a city engineer. If anybody knows someone that might be interested, please uh, encourage them to apply for that position. And it's also, I wanna say really nice to hear you work. Um, I appreciate the, you know, the knowledge and the interest that you have in, in trees and in the city and uh, in the public outreach. So, so thank you very much. Um, it's, it's great. It's great that you're, you're doing what you're doing. Royce, can you give me co-host so I can share my screen? You already have? Okay. Already done, Barb. Nice. Well, then let me pull up my PowerPoint. This is not, this is a fairly brief PowerPoint. It's more meant to just uh, get into letting you, you know, become more involved and aware of the, the comprehensive plan work that's coming up. Okay. Used to use in Actually, I'm used to being there in person. So where is the share? There it is. And there's the PowerPoint. All right. Can you see that? Yeah? Yes. Perfect. OK, so I. Um, you know, Larry has brought it to my attention that you are interested and rightfully so in the comprehensive plan update that we're about to, to launch. And I thought this would be a great time just to sort of talk a little bit about that, have a short discussion and answer any questions and also let you know really what's, uh, what's coming up. So uh, this update, you know, is providing you information about uh, the update to the city of DuPont comprehensive plan. We call it the comp plan, give you a little overview. I don't know, perhaps uh, some of you aren't, you know, up on what a comp plan is to explain why we have to do an update, uh, talk a little bit about schedule and what your role is. And like I said, then have a little discussion about that. So comprehensive plans, uh, they are called sometimes general plans, land use plans. It's a 20 year uh, vision document. It's uh, supposed to guide the future actions of a uh, community. And it's like I said, 20 year planning horizon uh, and, and really sets out that vision that a community has for itself in terms of land use growth and development. Um, so it's considered long range, of course. Um, but these goals and policies and putting that vision in place and following it um, is what makes, if you've gone to certain places, cities, counties, and you see uh, that they have achieved something that's special or unique, usually it's because they've been very strong in their planning activities. And so it's an important tool. Um, it's one that, uh, that I am, um, um, you know, excited to be able to work on whenever I come into a city or a county. And uh, DuPont is just a wonderful place because it's a planned community. We have a lot of opportunity that, um, that other cities and counties don't have because it was planned to be a certain way. 
And our job, I believe, in the comprehensive plan is to check in on that vision and, and adjust uh, the goals and policies to make sure that everything stays and continues to develop out in the future uh, as it was intended. So the comprehensive plan is a document. Uh, it, it, it has chapters, some people call them elements. The main chapters are gonna be your land use. The land use map in a comprehensive plan includes a map. And the map is, um, is what we call land use designations. It is different than a zoning map. However, a comprehensive plan is actually those goals and policies and that land use map, it becomes part of the, the development regulation. So it's, it's what we call codified in the end. We have a chapter on economic development, natural environment, cultural resources and historic preservation, parks and rec, housing, transportation, capital facilities and utilities. I've uh, emboldened the natural environment because that's the chapter in our comprehensive plan that addresses the tree goals and policies. So that's an important one for this commission to really focus on. So why, what's the update? Why are we doing an update? Um, basically what a lot of people will say, it's because it's a state mandate. So we have in Washington state, the Growth Management Act or the GMA, um, and it when, it when it was adopted by the legislature in the 90s, 94, it required the counties and cities to adopt comprehensive plans um, and, and to update them every two years, excuse me, every eight years. We just uh, had a House Bill 1241 that passed after this cycle, then that eight year adoption cycle is going to be 10 year because as you're listening to me, you're probably imagining, wow, that's a lot of stuff for a city to do. And it is, it's a big, it's a big job. And um, the Growth Management Act sets out the, you know, really the template for what we're supposed to be doing in, in terms of regional growth strategy and transportation. So it, it takes a lot of effort for a city our size uh, to be able to, to do what's required. Um, and in our case, it, we're in Pierce County, so we must update, update our plan by December, uh, actually it's 31st, not 21st, 2024, which sounds like a long way off, but it, it will come pretty fast. Uh, we last updated our comp plan in 2015. We know that things change and you know I'm a planner at heart. And so uh, planning is a good thing to do because it is so important to uh, get that policy document and tie it to your budget decisions that your that your council is making, and uh, and make sure that the the land use and the development pattern fits what you have intended, and your environmental goals and all of that. It's easy to get uh, to get. Um, away from that, and then uh, once you once you start to lose track, it's very hard to get things back in line in terms of well, where did we really want to see certain types of growth? What size of growth? Where should it be? Protecting trees? How important are these things? And making sure that that it's done the way that the community wants it done. So we don't have a schedule that is actually published yet. Um, we'll be kicking this off. Uh, the end of this year, 2022, um, which gives us not a lot of time. And of course the end date is the required December, 2024 adoption date. So what we'll do is, uh, is get the schedule published uh, and then make sure that that is available for, um, for everyone, for the public with some key dates on public outreach and participation. And that brings me to uh, how you, you can help and what your role is. So as I said, we, have, we hope that the whole community and our job is to try to reach all the voices um, because we need everyone to participate, give their input. The Tree Commission, um, you're, you're really, you, know, you, you have a role as a citizen, of course, and that is valued. But as a commission um, who is really concerned and interested in making sure that we preserve trees, plant trees, your input on the goals and policies for tree preservation in the natural environment chapter will be very valuable. 
And I would anticipate that the, we'll be working with you one-on-one -on -one at these commission meetings on those goals and policies in the future. This is the, if anyone has um, not seen the city's comprehensive plan, there's a link to it, but really all you need to do is go to your search engine and search for the city of DuPont comprehensive plan and you'll find this link and you can kind of look at it if you're interested. Um, it's, a, it's a big document. There's a lot of words, um, a lot of descriptive stuff. What we do when we do an update is we have to look at whether or not conditions have changed. We have to, um, again, tap into the community about whether or not the original vision is still intact um, and, and valid, whether or not the goals and policies are doing a good job. Have we missed some things? And I will tell you, Larry and I have talked about um, the tree goals and policies are, are, can, can be a lot better. Um, they, they are, if, you, if you start reading through the comp plan in, in the natural environment chapter, I think you will agree that there's um, more work that we can do on that to make sure that we're, um, that we're living up to Tree City USA. And uh, this is our time now for you commissioners to ask me questions and to have a little dialogue if you're curious about any, any of this. Um, and if not, then we can, you can certainly anticipate seeing me again as we begin our update process. So Barb, my uh, question is um, how, um, so December is the kickoff and I know there'll be a huge public uh, input phase um, and however we go about it this time around, but how do we as tree commissioners uh, get the best available science and the knowledge the, to, for the discussion of which areas we want to focus on and things like that. So is there uh, a budget for us to have a speaker come in? Is there, you know, how, how do we do that? Well, we don't, we have a budget for the comprehensive plan update. So um, if you are thinking about um, needing some professional or expert uh, guidance, we would, um, we would certainly be willing to look for that. We will have consultants that are kind of, you know, knowledgeable about the natural environment that'll be helping us with the update. But if you're thinking specifically about a topic that, that you feel you need to be um, more educated on to be able to give the input that's going to be required, then I think it would be good for you uh, and Larry um, to sort of talk that through and, and maybe and, and maybe flesh that out a little more and then we can work with that. I, I feel like Larry has a lot of personal experience based on his time in DuPont and seeing what has worked with the trees in DuPont, which ones are, you know, the ones that are destroying the sidewalks and continuing to cause problems. So I think he's going to be uh, pretty. And I know my way around DuPont, but I, I do refer to, um, we have a contract arborist. Uh, we have a heirloom orchard. Fruit trees are not my genre, but mm -hmm. I mean, I know my way around DuPont. I definitely know probably every tree species on just about every street, but I can also see it might be a need for some, you know, professional, you know, guidance. I, I, I think I can understand where you're coming from. I, I am thinking of measures of drought types of trees, climate adaptation, and also design. I think one of the things we weren't able to forecast as a citizen, as a city councilor, uh, we didn't, we planned our, our tree and our open space ratios based on living on a historic village ratios that were inside of a forest that is now gone. Um, and so the current state of where we are today doesn't reflect. So everybody who originally moved here thought they were moving to a forested place. So the conditions have changed and the conditions of climate have changed. So there's all these changes, which Barb pointed out, things are not the same as they were. And we need to revisit some of those things. So the things I'm talking about are 
design science for how the trees are used possibly and also what climate adaptations we need to make and one of the things you brought up so often Larry is irrigation you know so how do we move forward and make sure our forested areas again I, I lived a lot of years in Germany and all the forests are irrigated uh, there's water running into the forests um, and so those kind of things. And I, I don't know. And maybe you are the expert for us, Larry. Uh, <laughs> I'm new to this. Uh, so I know my way around DuPont. I mean, <laughs> you, the, the way you're talking is, is it makes me think of focusing more on natives and maybe a little less on street trees and, and things yeah. like that. Maybe come up with a plan for establishment of native plant material instead of long term irrigation expense. Mm -hmm. I think, like she said, we, we, we need to probably. Yeah, figure out specific goals for uh, yeah, for the um, for the that uh, city's comp plan. Uh, maybe yeah. we can talk about that more. Yeah, now and in I December. will. And I will say too, um, the state agencies are our partners. So you know, DNR, um, Ecology, those those are agencies that Fish and Wildlife that will be definitely willing to provide technical assistance at no cost. So we'll tap into the no cost technical assistance first, of course. Um, but, uh, it, you know, it, it may it may help you to, as you're having uh, the meetings, you know, it's not very many meetings before the kickoff, actually, that you're having. December is going to be here before we know it. But, um I think the first place we'll start, um, at least in terms of walking the, your, your commission through this, is to really bring, um, bring forward the goals and policies that are currently adopted and to rate, rate them, you know, in terms of you all live here, you are, um, you know, familiar with, um, with what the existing condition is. I think that you'll probably be local experts and that's important so we'll be able to talk through well this is this is what we have adopted now um, starting with where are the gaps that you see uh, when we identify those gaps and maybe some priorities that aren't addressed um, in the existing comp plan then that could also give us some guidance uh, in terms of where to turn for some technical information and expertise Maybe what we could do is add um, this specific discussion on as discussion items for every meeting until um, the kickoff. That way, maybe we kind of know where we're going with that. Does that sound good? Okay. And then you guys can bring to the table your thoughts and, you know, information. Um, and we can go from there. Sound good? Yeah, I do have one, one question. Um, when this comp plan uh, gets updated, um, is there a way to amend it if we don't have everything uh, kind of sussed out? That's a great question. The Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so we are. Uh, so the state uh, growth management act allows for an annual amendment cycle. You don't have to amend it every year but we have the ability once a year to make those amendments. So if we need to, you know, make some tweaks to it, then we can do that. That was a great question. It's this, it's this uh, eight year, which will be a 10 year um, update that's required. That's where you, ex you anticipate doing a, you know, a bigger, bigger job of, of changing things, looking at um, uh, if, if something has uh, really missed the mark or, or, or some uh, condition has changed from when it was last adopted. Um, and plus we look at laws that have changed um, to make sure that we're up to date with the most recent uh, legislation. But every year we have the ability to make those little tweaks. So that was a great question. Thanks for asking it. Is there any further discussion on item 6.2 uh, that we have for Ms. Kincaid? 
being pretty thorough. We'll uh, continue to discuss that leading up to the uh, kickoff. <clears throat> Just sitting here thinking I've got some ideas. So, um, well, thank you, Barb. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks really for, um, for inviting me in to talk and I will look forward to working with you again. Sounds great. Moving on to item seven, new business. We've lost the sound, haven't we? I, I didn't hear you, Elizabeth. Yeah, we couldn't hear you uh, in the Zoom. Oh, I'm sorry. So um, I don't know. How much did you not hear the last couple of minutes? None yeah, since we went to the piece of new business. OK. So what I was, um, uh, we were talking about this, the new business, it's a street tree nursery. We have about a hundred trees in our nursery and out of that hundred, I was able to verify that about 60 are not appropriate to plant next to a sidewalk, uh, basically. And we have to figure out what to do with those trees. And I'm hoping that the commission can um, help, help us figure out what to do with those. And uh, that's, that's, I think that's about where I ended. You, I'm sure that you have a, a, a list of the um, of, of those 60 trees, what the varieties are. Yeah, <clears throat> um, off the top of my head, I'll tell you it's the Korean Stewardias, um, the Katsuras, some maple trees, and even the ash trees that I was talking about, the purple ash, um, and I believe the trident maple. We have a, three maples in there, two of them are not appropriate. For a sidewalk, I think the trident maple and the ace of which is the red maples, are not good. We have hedge maples, which are good, and we have horn beams, which are good. Um, so those other varieties I mentioned, we need to find somewhere to put them. And one moon fir and some <laughs> yeah, heirloom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yours. <laughs> It'd be really cool if we found a, a new park and put the moon fir in the center of it, and then we have a ring of all those kind of like little labyrinth coming and, around and it. Space. You know, <laughs> uh, the cats here no so um we did have some temporary workers the year before last and i kind of saw this coming and i got like 40 of them planted right now we're understaffed i mean our public works department i i, I can't see us getting anything done in in the near future but how quickly do they need to be planted before we start losing them what really made me start to think that this is an urgent issue is in 2020, or actually early 2021, between on Center Drive between Haskell and Kincaid, we planted some um, Katsura and some ash trees in that wide medium right down the center of the road. And I, I just couldn't believe how big those trees have gotten compared to the exact nursery stock that they were pulled from. So I'm concerned that the trees left in that nursery that we don't have anywhere to put are getting root bound, so the sooner the better. I wouldn't leave them there another year or two for sure. So how much open area do we have to put them? We have lots of open area. I'm trying to figure out the resources to get them in the ground. We have irrigated parks. You know, Leshai Park is a huge park. We could probably put a lot of them in there. <clears throat> the year before last when we planted a bunch with the, with the temporary crew I got with the parks agency, 
and walked around with a couple members uh, and we, you know, they showed us where they would like the trees and that worked good. But right now we just don't have the staff resources. Labor is the most ex biggest expense. I mean, there's some money, there's some money allocated for tree work in the city. Yeah, I think for I'm Arbor Day, why don't we get kids to dig holes? No, well, you know, you could auger the holes. Now that's you could auger the holes, and the kids could fill them in. We, we well, can make the adults. Holes. I'm I, not going to use child labor. I think we have public comment. <laughs> adults and children. We have tons of guys in the scouts that need scout projects we need that to are organize coming to us. That. That, that's what we need. That's what I need help with. We got to figure out what to do with those trees. Like scout projects. Yeah, I don't know who's the. Left, they come to me and if, they they, do drink our, if they come to you, so if we can change it for you green markers, you can point them our way. And, we can, I can point yeah. them your way, and then you have to help guide them. But it yes. has to be a big project, so you have to. You know, they'll have to get crew people here to help plant. And yeah, I mean, th these are the things I get. That would also uh, go towards also our, our, ed our public education and our outreach yeah, as well. Um, and especially if there is a, you know, a, a, a young scout who needs an Eagle Scout project. Yeah. That's what they all yeah. are. I have so, one. boy, that, that sounds so, like it. So I, I guess what, what I see us needing to do is finding the location or locations um, and, and then, uh, reaching out. We need to be set up with those folks and then I can help you with, um, you know, resources. And, uh, I think we could, we planted 50, but the, I don't, they were not those trees that you have mentioned 50 saplings that did not take, uh, next to Sequelche Creek. Cause it's supposed to be shaded. Yeah, it's that first three years. It's tough with anything, but um, but these, if we are, could... these are big. They're they're twenty gallon pots. I don't know if you, they're big. The trees are probably over a hundred pounds to pick up and stick in a backhoe bucket. They're getting big. But I mean, that is an area that I don't know if those are the trees that would go there. But that is an area that was supposed to be my understanding is supposed to be treed because that's what stops the canary grass. Uh, growing in the creek if we ever get the water back in um, but <laughs> it would stop it from evaporating out if we could get at least some yeah. of the trees started there Gee. irrigating them i i don't i don't know if you can well, set up a temporary it, for three years we're at sepulcher creek are you talking about by on the uh um away from the sound side of the bridge that whole uh, edmund village park where their little basketball thing is yeah. there. Yeah. So there's irrigation there. I think we could run some temporary stuff. So that was but, all at one time planted. Nothing survived because mm, there was no water in the creek. No water too. and gravelly soils. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. Um, did you plant native trees? Is that a specification or do you know? Do you have that information? I don't. If you um, could look into that, may, that might be a viable spot. I agree. Well, it would, it would go... Uh, complete that task as well which has mm -hmm. been and we might be able to run some um you know temporary irrigation for just the three-year establishment that's a great idea so um this is just a new business i just wanted to get you guys thinking but maybe between now and this time next year we'll have a plan to do something with those trees does that sound good yeah. um, i like your ideas i like um the, man, eagle scout sounds great uh you know, along the creek is great. And they get the little Eagle Scout plot there. Yeah, I, I think those are good ideas. I just, they're, they're not going to sit in those pots very much longer. They're just getting stunted and root bound. and They don't recover well, even if you plant them after it's too late. Um, and they're, they're nice trees. Uh, so anyway, that was the new business. Uh, any, any other discussion on that? I don't need to make a motion for the good of the order. Right? Mm, no, you just ask if there's anything for the good of the order. Is there anything for the good of the order? Just one thing, go back to the comprehensive plan, because I know it's a beefy, difficult thing to get a hold of, but if you do open it and just go up to find and put the word tree in there and start seeing where it's coming up, 
to start getting familiar with what our policies are because it's in more than natural um, resources in our philosophy up front and things like that. But that's just a way to kind of, because it is a lot to handle. And you can, um, you can either Google it or just go to the city's website, look at, uh, it's pretty easy to find in there. It's easier it's, online to look at it and do the search. Yeah. And if you just put the word tree in, it'll take you to everywhere we mention trees. And then you'll very quickly start getting a picture of what our intent has been has been mm -hmm. okay if there is no further business i make a motion for the adjournment of our meeting second all in favor aye we have adjourned our meeting of the tree commission at 6 56 p.m hope all you right. all have a wonderful evening sounds great Bye, thank you.